Now, this afternoon, drivers struggle to find petrol to buy as four shortage hits many outlets in the capital, Accra. Some of the drivers have checked as many as five stations without success. This follows the industrial action by the Tanker Drivers Association. For the drivers, the situation, if not checked, could be devastating for them. My colleague Michael Papani Ashley has been visiting some fuel stations. What, what we are understanding is that there's fuel shortage at many of the uh, OMCs and their outlets here. We are currently in Abeka La Paz. This gold station, we are told, uh, has been out of petrol particularly for two days now, since Thursday, August. Uh, um, we'll, we'll try to speak to some of the drivers. Like this driver here, we are told that uh, they've had to uh, roam unsuccessfully trying to look for good quality oil, uh, fuel. Uh, to please, what's your name? My name is Bernard Ampiao. Okay, Bernard, so how long have you been trying to look for fuel? For the past three days now, I've been here trying to buy fuel. Normally what I do is, uh, early in the morning, I fill my tank before starting work. But for the past three days, I've been here coming in the morning, in the evening. I don't get some to buy. I don't know the reason why. But I heard that maybe they have these tankers drivers have problem concerning their payments and those things. So I think, and even uh, today I heard that they've called off the strike. Uh, but uh, I'm still hoping and that they, they bring us fuel because I normally buy oil. Okay. Yeah. So let me ask you, how disturbing is this for you? Oh, really, it has really been unbearable because, uh, you know, if you don't get it here, then it means you have to drive through a whole lot of places before you can get a fuel. I only buy oil. That is it, yeah. But how many outlets have you been to? Uh, like six, yes. Six. None of them tell you the same thing. They don't have yes, petrol. Same, the, the same thing. They don't have petrol. They only have diesel. You know? so, so at this point, what, what do you want to be done? Because you need it to also do some work. Yes, yeah, so what I have to do is uh, I have to look out for other four stations. The people that they have, they just purchase it from there. Bernard, let me thank you very much. Uh, so Bernard is one of many who have been searching through um, town, hoping to get some fuel to buy, particularly petrol. But just now he's been turned away because this particular station, like many others, have told him that there's no fuel uh, to buy. There's some more vehicles coming through, all have been told nearly the same response, that there's no fuel um, here. But there's no uh, um, signboard displaying to tell drivers who are also in the same situation whether there's fuel or not. They would have to drive uh, into the station and later try to find out whether they have fuel um, or not. It's a devastating moment for drivers, especially for online drivers and commercial drivers, taxis and trotters who depend on this as an input for the work that they do. They can only hope that uh, a solution to the concerns of the tanker drivers will be found as soon as possible. For Joy News, Michael Ashale. So we've been trying to reach the National Petroleum Authority to find out what uh, they are doing about this particular situation, but our efforts have proved futile. Now, when we get there, some responses, we'll get them on in this bulletin. But it was to be the power voice to the binary political rhetoric from the NPP and the NDC. A group of angry youth, backed by the power of the internet, began to mobilize. The goal? to pile pressure on government and other state actors to fix the country. Now, exactly a year since it highly talked about protest, my colleague Manuel Kranting has been finding out what has become of the group Fix the Country. Fourth August, 2021. A movement that started only as a social media hashtag, Fix the Country, had metamorphosed into perhaps the biggest protest organized by a non-political group in Ghana. A movement of ordinary citizens was now demanding strict accountability of its government. I think that's very important that we show that we reject the attitude of the government and we want to create a culture of dissent. It's important that we create a culture of dissent. We show our disapproval. We are tired of the lies 
Article 71, her office holders are lies. It is bogus. It is a calculated attempt to steal us. We are tired of the Mendacillo crimes, the Zabanism, and the political prostitute. Their plan was to spread the protest across the country. Today, August 4, is a rebirth of Ghana. And this, in itself, is a manifestation of that rebirth. But this is not the end. This is actually the beginning. We are all hungry in this country. And we won't allow tribalism to divide us. From here, we are going to Kumasi, Tamale, who because we want all of us to participate in this demonstration. But this was not to be. After exactly a year, a breakaway by the Economic Fighters League, the arrest and prosecution of Oliver Baker Vormawa for alleged treasonable comments and a general lack of activity have made the group a pale shadow of its former self. It felt like the, the, there wasn't that pursuit of the message which was fixed the country. It was just about some people giving themselves some self-importance and self-aggrandizing sort of, you know, status. That's Chris Atadika. Because he once was a strong supporter of the group, is not for a but not anymore. Or, 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 or a selected group of people. Because the country is something that lies in the heart of every young person in Ghana. So we, we, we use our roads, we see bad roads, we feel it inside that, uh, that no, this thing needs to be fixed. At a point, you had some faction of the leaders coming out to put out a statement saying they are no more part of the movement. So I blame the leaders for it because obviously, if they also blame our leadership for the poor status of our country, right? If Fix the Country itself as a movement wasn't able to work, it means the leadership of Fix the Country also needs to be blamed. And why did the EFL abandon the Fix the Country ship? I meet fighter Hardy Yakubu for some answers. The, the main thing is that they were there were uh, uh, measures, actions, or trances, clearly, consistently. And this is not just once or twice, okay, consistently. Okay, trying very hard, you know, to push the, the, the message in a way that clearly was in the benefit of the uh, opposition. If we wanted to be in the opposition or to join the opposition, we would have joined it. If we wanted to join the, uh, the government, we would have done so. This is strongly rejected by Fix the Country. Felicity Nelson is one of the conveners. I, that's completely false. I, this isn't something that I'm ever going to support. And if there's, there's, they made a lot of allegations when they had their press conference. And all of those allegations came with literally no proof. So if they're saying some persons who, if you tell me some persons are pushing in favor of a certain political party, who's that person? Who, what political party is that? You know, you know, be bold. If you're bold enough to make allegations, back them up and say this particular person, that particular person, on this particular day, this is what happened. You know, be specific. But when you start throwing general allegations around, like, I'm not going to, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm refuting it, but I don't even want to spend too much time on it. So why does the group seem to have lost its luster? If you look at even what's happening with Oliver, considering the fact that, you know, um, he was... Well, he was in detention for about 30 days, you know, and there was a lot of back and forth even regarding which court to take him to. Even when he was arrested, it took like nearly 26 hours before he was allowed to even have access to a lawyer. These are, this, like, these are fundamental human rights which were being denied of him. So I definitely think that there's always this um, urge for government to use the police especially to kind of clamp down on us. I, I genuinely think that it's one of those moments where the state's been waiting. We're just waiting for you to slip up and get you on something, just something. If the state genuinely had a case, why is it that every, most of the time when they get to the courtroom, the state prosecutor doesn't turn up, they're asking for more time. I think there's definitely people who think, who 
would not be as active or as vocal because, you know, the reality is that, you know, as Martin Amidu said, when you fight corruption, corruption fights back. And the, rea um, the reality is that for a lot of people from jobs to contracts to, you know, certain opportunities, if you say the wrong thing about the government, even if you like the wrong post, these are things which can have opportunities. You can miss out on opportunities, lose out on job opportunities, lose out on scholarship opportunities. So, yes, there are real life um, repercussions for speaking up against the government. And what's happening to Oliver? is definitely going to make some people, a lot of people, feel like maybe I shouldn't be so vocal, maybe I need to stay, take a step back. Historian and scholar Kwame Dako Ankara agrees government might have been on the heels of the group. By bringing out some of the issues, issues of corruption, issues of, uh, let's say, mismanagement, incompetence and so on, can easily, have, can easily bring the government down or make the government unpopular. So the government and its supporters will also find ways and means to undermine this uh, 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 group so that whatever they say will not be what? Will not catch with uh, catch, uh, will resonance with the people. That is the specific uh, uh, issues with regard to this group. What then has become of the group's ideals? If people are speaking up against the state, even if they hate Fix the Country, even if they hate me, if they hate Oliver, and they're speaking up against the state, look, what happened in Swami? They went on one. They did one, one day of him coming over and them showing him small Pepe. <laughs> Small Pepe. So the, the reality is that don't ever think you're not important. Your voice doesn't matter. You just need to be, mo you need to organize and be, you, if you have a unit and this, all of you are saying the same thing, you can win. That's the thing. Fix the country is not about us. It's about the people. So once the people are out there going on their protests, you know, fighting for what they deserve, what is owed to them, is a win for me. It doesn't have to be under the guise or the banner of fix the country for it to be a win. It's never about personal glory, fix the country's glory. It's about we want Ghana to be better. Whether or not the Fix the Country group has been successful with its aim, its leaders, supporters and even rivals agree on one thing. That the struggle continues, even if under a new banner name. Manuel Cranting, Joy News, Accra. Well, this afternoon, political scientist at the University of Ghana, Dr. Kwame Asante, says the group must improve its organization and reposition its focus if it wants to regain its relevance. I think um, they've done their best. They've been able to bring their grievances out. And some of the things they said are uh, the realities of the ground. There's no doubt about that. All right. Um, all these type of movements, yes, uh, this is what they do. But uh, the problem is how they will be able to sustain the effort, and that's the difficulty they face today. Mm. Um, some of it is born out of the fact that um, some of the, 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 the demands, uh, you will find it difficult to sustain that on the street. You recall that they said uh, that among the things that they were looking forward to government fixing include uh, changing the constitution, changing the political system and the whole of it. The political system is a big concept, all right? So if you are looking for that, you are going to have a difficult. Mm. Uh, in addition to that, they also talk about what? They want development and all that. Development is not a one-day thing. It takes a long while. So if you want that. So I was advising those days when we were talking about the issue that uh, it should take the form of an anomic uh, pressure group. This is a pressure group that are born out of circumstances. So you take something little, you drum home, and then you gain support, you move on to another thing. Yes. So that should have been the, 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 the strategy. But they knew, they had their game plan, and um, they did their best. Mm. Uh, we need such groups who use legitimate means to bring to attention concerns of people to the doorstep of what? Uh, holders of political power. There's absolutely no wrong about that. But all these things, you do it within the framework of the law. They've done their bit, but there are lots that they need to do if they want to sustain themselves. They, they, they blame government attack on some of their leading members uh, for what is now the inactivity of the group um, or, or its activeness in, uh, at the front line. Would you say that is legitimate or, or it's only perceived? They have to define to us what the government attack is. I don't know. So I cannot speak to that issue. Well, well they, they cite the prosecution of Oliver Bakavoma as one of them. Oh, the, that issue.
issue, I'll not go into it, but if uh, the leader is not part of the group, um, obviously it's the going concern, so the group must survive with other members of the group holding the fort, all right? But all boils down to one of the things is that you need to have what? Every organization, you need somebody who that person will organize the system for you. The person will be able to what? Stand in when there is somebody uh, who's a key person who's absent and all that. These type of arrangements ought to be made so that they can sustain themselves. Mm. Would you say the group has been successful, given what it set out to achieve? And, and, and key amongst them was the fact that they say people could not even express themselves. Uh, today, they are saying they are, they are unable to be as active as they want to be because government is clamping down on uh, the activities and hounding some of their people. Uh, would you say that they have been successful in that regard? If, if you look at what they've done, as, 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 as you have pluses and then you have minus. The pluses is that um, there are some genuine issues they brought to the fore, i.e. unemployment, i.e. issue of what, uh, development, and a host of them. Well, female students of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology are being asked to take responsibility of their own safety in the wake of sexual attacks against women there. The school has also decided to step up security on campus. This comes after six KNUSC students allegedly gang raped a first year student. It is the second incident in a week. The six were remanded by the Asokoremon Pong Magistrate Court and lawyer for the accused Richard Edudako has denied the claims against his client. Meanwhile, University Relations Officer for KNUST, Dr. Daniel Norris Bequin, says although the university is worried by the claims, these are isolated cases. He has a reviewed plans by the school to step up security on campus. We do weekly our part as a university, but senior students should also make sure that they, they, they ensure their own safety. You are not supposed to be entering when a male student invites you into a, a place where you know it's not your, your hostel. You don't have to be going to those places. Even if you have to go, we have been given education. Get a colleague to go with you if it becomes necessary. But in the meantime, we are stepping up our education. Uh, we have security people on campus who are making sure that our students are safe. Now let's go on the phone lines and speak to the Women's Commission of the KNUSC SLC, Telali Major Setuga. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Now we understand you have launched a campaign against sexual harassment. How grave is the issue? Um, um, good afternoon and thank you very much for having me. Um, rape, rape has taken a, a devastating toll on the lives of the people who have suffered from it. And so as the mouthpiece of the female student, mm. we stand strongly against it and we are doing everything in our power to run more sensitization and educational um, campaigns for the female students so that they, they know what constitutes assault and what constitutes rape and how they can protect themselves. And then the officers, they can report to if such incidents happen. Mm. And, and so far, how is it going? Okay, um, it, it's been great. The, the campaign, or the campaign, or the sensitization is uh, actually started some time ago. But then, right now, we are feeling so much heat because of um, the incident. So we we are stepping up and we are engaging uh, management on how well uh, we can go about it and handle the issue. Mm. Uh, most of the times when these things come up, uh, acceptance is, is, is something else. How are women, especially on campus, accepting it? How are the, the, your, your counterpart males uh, also coming in, into the fray to help in, in this campaign? Okay, first of all, rape is not rampant in KNUSC. And uh, when, when an issue of rape comes up, we, we leave aside um, the conversations about gender and then we focus on vulnerability and we focus on the dignity that every human being deserves to enjoy and then the freedom that the the constitution and then the policy of KNUSC has assured them of. So what I can say is that uh, the the males around are supporting the commission um, through 
their media, and then, then also their contribution on what ideas we should bring on board to investigate um, issues of assault. Mm. All right. Thank you very much for joining us here. Um, uh, thanks for your time. That's the SRC Women's Commissioner for the KNUST. Now, the Ministry of Transport has ordered for the refurbishment and inclusion of the Elmina Fish Processing Plant into the Elmina Fish and Harbour Project. Sector Minister Kweku Ofori Esiama says the 105 million euro Elmina Fish and Harbour being built will be incomplete if the fishing processing plant is not operational. The $11.6 million fish processing plant, which was commissioned in 2016, has not been operational since, but was reduced to the molding of ice blocks. Speaking in an interview with Joy News, after inspecting the fishing harbor project, the sector minister assured that when completed, the project would serve not only the people of Elmina, but people of Cape Coast and the central region in general. The transport minister toured the facility at Elmina to acquaint himself with the progress of work there. Kweku Furiesiama expressed satisfaction with the rate of work currently ongoing at the site and asked for the abandoned Elmina fish processing plant to be included in the design of the harbour. According to him, the Elmina fishing harbour will not be complete if the fish processing plant built about six years ago is not incorporated in the plan. Uh, we cannot have this facility fully functioning without the fish processing plant. It is because of the existence of this fish processing plant that, that in the new construction we do not include it. So if there's a problem with it, we need to refurbish it. We need to make sure that it works because we cannot have a fish number without the fish processing plant, which includes coastal and other things. So we need to have it ready. This is a fishing harbor. Port, yeah. This is not a landing site. Right. We have two fishing harbors in this country already. Right. We are upgrading this place into a fishing harbor. We are not doing a landing site. We are upgrading this place into a fishing harbor. Right. We have a secondary fishing harbor. We have a thermal fishing harbor. Yeah. There are two fishing harbors we are building in addition, right. here and Jamestown. In, in, in Accra, right. and this place is going to be handed over. They will finish this fishing number later by the first quarter of next year. On the controversy of the promise of a harbor in Cape Coast, the minister indicated that the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority has a master plan within which ports are sited and within the coordinate, it's Elmina that's most plausible for the sighting of the harbor. He explained that when the harbor is completed, it will serve not only the people of Elmina, but the people of Cape Coast and all parts of the central region. He said he will build a port in Cape Coast, Bawa Elmina. But in our, G in our GPHA master plan, we name ports according to our coordinates. And if we say we build a port in Cape Coast, not exactly, but, 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 but it's an enclave. But these are, yeah, for me, it's not a substantive matter that for me to do. But the most important thing is that what he did promise is actually being, being manifest. That he was going to build a port, and that's exactly what we set out ourselves to do. And because of the COVID, this project has delayed a bit. And I need to retreat to this point. I mean, I'm praying that all day you appreciate what government has done for them. This is the president who has set out himself or set out himself to develop this country. Now according to his electoral fortunes. Everybody knows that Mina is under our best place when he comes into the election. But so far as he's concerned, he's been voted as a president to develop to develop this country. So whether the people vote for him or they don't vote for him, he has a mandate to develop and that's exactly what he's going to do. So when people out there cried our president that he was going to build a port for people of Cape Coast, he hasn't done it. The contractor for the project, Wim Van Hoof, explains the work done so far by the Bell C Limited Ghana Limited the contractors for the project. Well, first of all, it's called the Amina Fishing Harbor uh, Rehabilitation Project. Um, before we came here, there was a, a port with two breakwaters. Um, if you turn around, you'll see that it's now the very large new breakwater has been installed. Um, there is a new reclamation, actually where we are standing right now, uh, 10 months ago it was water. Um, some buildings will be built uh, specific, specifically for the fishermen. Um, and then behind me you can see another breakwater, effectively extending the port three and a half times. Reached almost 90% completion. Uh, we've done uh, our major scope, the breakwaters, the reclamation, where we are standing now. We are almost finalizing the key wall. 
when they intend completing the project and subsequently when they are handing it over. The 105 million euro project is expected to help shore up the fishing businesses of the people of Elmina, Cape Coast and the Central Region. Reporting for Joy News, Richard Kwejunyakon, Cape Coast. As we're watching Joy News today, we'll take a break. When we return, we'll bring you letters from the world of business. Hello, good afternoon. It's time to do business with me, Beverly Broom. As part of strategies to transform from a frontier market to an emerging one, the Ghana Stock Exchange says it is engaging various groups within the business community. This engagement, it says, has the potential to double the number of companies currently listed on the stock exchange in five years. Managing director of the GSE Echo Afeji made this known at an MOU signing ceremony between his outfits and the GIPC here in Accra. We've been trying to get more companies listed on the market for a while. It's not been easy and uh, we'll keep on trying very hard um, using various strategies where um, we keep on educating. Uh, where we are forming a very strong um, alliance with um, um, Association of Ghana Industries and, um, the, and other um, associations in order to educate their members over the importance of long-term capital, raising long-term capital. That's what most Ghanaian companies need. If not, it becomes difficult for them to expand and grow. You know? If not, difficult, it becomes difficult for them to expand and grow. Uh, so. Um, we believe going forward, uh, we can easily double that number maybe in, in five years' time. Uh, that's why um, our vision has always been, how do we get to 100 to, to, to make the market more liquid? Uh, that is for both equities and debt. So we'll keep on working hard together. <laughs> Ghana's development partners are urging government to speed up action to move the country towards the generation and supply of renewable energy. This, they say, will enable Ghana qualify for cheaper funds with conditions tied to the use of clean energy, such as solar and wind power. Here's Netherlands ambassador to Ghana. First of all, we have a joint challenge and a joint assignment to reduce the emission of climate uh, change causing uh, gases, greenhouse gases, and in that we have to collaborate together. And it's not only a collaboration between countries, but it's also a collaboration between different segments of society. It's public-private collaboration. And the Netherlands is mainly focusing on promoting public-private cooperation in order to turn energy, uh, electricity generation, into something which is not contribution to pollution. So we focus on enhancing the use of renewable energy, like uh, hydropower, like uh, solar, like wind, in order to generate electricity. And we try to promote also that in Ghana, the energy mix, the amount, the uh, contribution of renewable energy in producing electricity is enhanced because at the moment it is only 30%, mainly hydropower. 70% of Ghana's electricity is uh, generated by fossil fuels. And the plea that I made this morning was to see if Ghana could change this energy mix and enhance the uh, contribution of renewable energies, and that's mainly solar and wind, in the electricity generation. And the Netherlands would be very happy to uh, support that effort. And that's all for business. We go for a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Please stay. To sports now on Joy News today, I am Muftar Nabila Abla, General Secretary of the Ghana Football Association, Prosper Harrison Addo, has defended the decision of the football governing body to engage Bet Power as headline sponsors of the Ghana Premier League for the next three seasons. 
According to him, the agreement will not compromise the league, as many have claimed. Competition sponsorship doesn't encourage betting. Uh, the betting industry have their own way of promoting their, their, um, the market, their, their product to, to the populace. Um, of course, we have a platform and um, they also intend to partner us to develop the game. Uh, betting companies are in Ghana. Indeed, Bet Power has been in Ghana for some time now. They are regulated industry, and so that's why you saw the gaming commission here. Uh, they, are, they have their do's and don'ts, and uh, because of my background, I, I, I am, should I say, privileged to know the kind of regulation we have in Ghana about betting uh, and lottery. And so um, they, they, they are strictly regulated, and um, the fact of the sponsorship doesn't really encourage uh, negative betting. When, when I say negative betting, I mean betting that is not uh, sanctioned by the state. So we have the national laws which allow betting. Um, of course, under 18 cannot bet. Of course, people who are playing in football cannot bet. And so those who still go on and will strictly monitor and strictly sanction anyone who fall foul uh, of the provisions we have. Management Committee Chairman of the Black Galaxies, Dr. Tony Urban, says the focus of the team is to qualify to the Chan tournament to be staged in Algeria next year. The Galaxies eliminated Benin in the preliminary round 4 0 on aggregate and will face Nigeria in the last hurdle. Urban reckons the team is in a position to qualify to the tournament. So um, the focus is to qualify. You know, we have in the last four attempts, we have not been very successful. So our players are very determined to go to Nigeria. And to go to Nigeria, we, we need to overcome, uh, I mean, to go to Algeria. And to go to Algeria, we have to overcome Nigeria. And uh, for, for us, our focus is what is going to take us there. We know for certain that games between Ghana and Nigeria, there is no intercolleges you know, uh, between these two countries. It's always very, very, very serious. And given that um, they think we have deprived them of their right to go to the World Cup, which I'm surprised because uh, we have also in the last few years been a very strong force. And so they, 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 they are wounded and we know they are wounded. And therefore, based on that knowledge, our players and technical teams are very determined to overcome Nigeria. Uh, it's not going to be easy. Absolutely, it will be difficult. I'm sure Nigeria will spend all their time training for Ghana. In any case, they didn't take part in the preliminary match. So we have prepared and we know we are going to meet Nigeria. And we know, inshallah, we will beat Nigeria. And still on the Commonwealth Games, Deborah Aqua has qualified to the final of the long jump despite arriving in the UK just a couple of hours before her jump. She did 6.85 to finish her first. We'll have details when we come back at 2 p.m. for sports today. Showbiz continues right after this. Now, just before we take a leave of you, some very important sports news we have for you. And Michelle is here with it. Michelle. Hello, Bryce. What do we have? You wake up one morning and you see uh, this white dude on social media who says he's a, he's a Ghanaian from the north. How, how, how do you react to it? Uh, ask questions. How is he a Ghanaian? Nationalization or what? All right. So, yes, those are the questions you ask. And um, the story goes far on to say this gentleman is representing Ghana at an international event. Mm. And they are wondering how is he a Ghanaian and uh, okay. how... How did he get to represent Ghana in this competition? Yes, over the week, not over the weekend, just yesterday, two days ago, Trey Hon, who was a unicyclist repre uh, representing Ghana at the Unicycling Convention and World Championships, you know, he spoke to Joy Sports yesterday, explaining his story about how he became a Ghanaian. And uh, together with his father, they came here first in 2006. 
before before lodging here permanently, permanently in 2014 because uh, his mom is, uh, has been posted around the hospitals here in the north. Okay. And um, you know, what makes the story even more sweet is the fact that they've been able to introduce this obscure sport, obscure because it's not so uh, big here in Ghana. So obscure sports, the people there in the north who are taken to it very nicely and um, they even want to go further to this point whereby they want to start taking some Ghanaians out there to represent the country as okay. a team, not just Hitri as a team. And, and you, you, you spoke to them, Yeah, right? we spoke to them. Okay, yeah. so let's have a, a listen to what, what they told you. Thank you. As we say in the north, uh, <laughs> So thank you very much. God bless you. I, I really like uh, Kinke and Ghana too. He's a he's a KK man. Me, I'm a Banku man. <laughs> oh, okay. You have a little primary at home. <laughs> what about every Sunday we go to the chop bar after church and he will always get KK and I will always get Banku. Uh, that's nice, that's nice. What about mommy? What does mommy get? Uh, she likes fufu. Oh, I was, fufu, fufu but was the, you know the fufu, I love the north. And please, my northern brother should not be offended. But the fufu in the north is always the yam one. <laughs> and the fufu in the south with the plantain and the cassava is is much sweeter but in the north we don't have that one so we just take the yam fufu oh man that's 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 a beautiful thing there. thank beautiful, you so yeah. much for that piece yeah <laughs> we have the uh, longer one you know coming on sports okay. today and also tomorrow on sports review 7 a.m all right okay thank you very much for that work and that's how we wrap up today's edition of the joy news today there's more news on my joyonline.com up next is marketplace my name is samuel kojo brace do have a great afternoon hey.